Hey everybody, it's me, Vita Sepia Scholar, long time no see. Hope this, this video finds you happy, blessed, and full of love. And I'm here with some very, very beautiful faces who woke up early, they're in a whole nother state, uh, just to hang out with me and talk about this book. Um, <laughs> I'm the Sepia Scholar and I, the channel is about reactions, reviews, and grown-up conversations. This would be considered a grown-up conversation for me, but a reaction for the beautiful ladies of what we call our yearly vacation club, <laughs> whatever you want to call, and we're overdue. But um, <laughs> if you don't know the story of how we all linked up, um, I went to college with Carla and Daisy's our baby sister. I said our, no, I said our baby sister. And Cindy's my favorite, favorite engineer person overall. Like, I'm so happy I made her acquaintance. We all went to um, Hawaii for Carla's bucket. Well, my bucket list trip, Carla's big, 40 and fabulous, 40 and sexy trip, all that good stuff. And we had such a good time um, talking about food, fun, and book. And we're all STEM ladies. And so we bonded over that. We said, hey, let's keep this going. Hence why I think it's about our fourth or fifth video. I can't remember right now. Uh, we started off <laughs> We started off with that awful book. Uh, sick. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Definitely. Yeah, Three books. Yes. Uh, we started off with Small Town Big Magic, I believe. The that was like one of the worst books. Sorry, uh, to that author. Um, <laughs> and we were we were pretty blood raw on that. And the last one, I believe, was the Rose Code. Fix me if fix me if I'm wrong. And that was a really cool, awesome um book or whatever. So, and I one of my favorite was the Henna Artist, but all the books I have enjoyed. So it was my turn to pick a book. And I said, okay, ladies, what are you up for? <laughs> because there's a book that um, all my sisters, all my, all the lady friends, especially the African-American ones, they love from an author called Eric Jerome Dickey. It's called Chasing Destiny. It's kind of raunchy. It's kind of wild. There's, it, yeah. Uh, are you guys up to uh, listen or read this book? And you guys did well and better than I know myself. So I said, you might be able to do this. So um before we get into it let me have each of you guys say hello and let everybody know who you are i can go first um my name is carla i have a background in civil structural engineering and now i do recruiting for the aec community architecture engineering and construction community sandy you're muted oh cool Hi, I'm Cindy. Uh, I am an engineer by trade, um, and I work for a utility. Awesome. I'm Daisy. I'm the baby sister. Um, I am a project manager for a DevSecOps engineering group, and we just help people migrate their on-prem applications to the cloud. So super happy to, to be part of the group, even though I'm the baby. Yeah, that's the baby. <laughs> And I'm V. As you know, I'm the CPA Scholar. I've been working hard on this brand for a long time. Um, I have several brands. I have uh, Tootman Bell, which means everybody's beautiful in Creole. Um, I just dropped You Don't Location the book. So more to come on that. And I am a STEM girl. I am an engineer. So all of us get together and we sound real smart together, but we're a lot of fun too. So we're going to, this is going to be a wild ride. <laughs> So the book that we're, as I showed, is going to be Chase and Destiny. And Destiny is a piece <laughs> of work. I'm going to do um, a quick synopsis of the story. So we'll just jump straight into it. And we're going to say, what is the plot? What is the plot of this book? So let me find the synopsis. It's like riding a bike, y'all. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> so let me find this plot. Mm -mm -mm. In the meantime, you guys can chat. <laughs> the plot was, in, or the summary on the book was incredibly vague. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, not nearly, I don't think it came even close to what the book ended up being. Do you think they did that on purpose? 
it possibly like it, they did definitely not gear you up for a lot of the situations that were gonna happen. It, it seemed from the from the synopsis that this was like a coming of age story. Yeah, you know? <laughs> well, I think it depends on which synopsis. I'm gonna do the general one, but it depends on which synopsis you read. Because I found a really really tame synopsis. I'm gonna read this one real quick. Um, with prose hot enough to scorch fingers, Eric Jerome Dickey has electrified readers with New York Times bestsellers in Chasing Destiny. He edges into a dangerous, sexy territory. See, this one alludes to it. So, Billy is, an, is notorious for her beauty as she is for the hot yellow Ducati motorcycle she rides down LA's meanest streets. Tough and talented, she does things her way until an unplanned pregnancy spins her life out of control. Her problem? Her lover Keith's divorce decree has been revoked. Forcing him to choose between Billy and his dangerously manipulative wife, Carmen, along with their troubled, deceptive daughter, Destiny, a 15 year old dancing on the edge of womanhood. Horrific things happen when Keith's daughter disappears in the company of low friends in dark places. And in Chasing Destiny, Billy, Keith, Car and Carmen find their lives inextricably linked by a dangerous and seductive pursuit at any speed, at any cost. I think that one is more than the one I saw that I can't find. But the other one was like, oh, it's just I a little The other one was on Amazon. I looked it up on Amazon and it was like, it's a coming yeah. of age story. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, they do talk about Destiny like disappearing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. These mm -hmm. like, these really drumming this up to be like kind of crazy. Like, I don't see yeah. how this could be crazy. And then I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about the characters. So. It took me a minute to get this together because there were so many characters, but there's main ones. But before I do the characters, I want to talk about Eric Jerome Dickey. Why? Because, well, first of all, he's one of my favorite authors. I think he's someone, when I do go into the adult realm, um, that he's kind of who I'm going to model myself after only because of his attention to detail. You can tell he researches his books. You can tell he's been where, where he's writing about. And I love the way that he fleshes out each character. And I've my one of my favorite books is um is it Sleeping with Strangers? There's a series. It's the um, Finding Getting series, and he's a mercenary. You guys haven't read that one yet, but he's actually STEM. So if you know his story, he passed away and everything, but he was a computer uh, technology um, major. So he was working in IT and all different types of stuff. And how he ended up writing was he. Um, a friend invite he went he went to visit LA and a friend of his invited him to a writing class because she didn't want to be the only African American in there. And she ended up dropping out and he ended up catching a bug and going with it. And, and now many, many, many books later. So shout out to Eric Jerome Dickey. All right, rest in peace, all that good stuff. He was a prolific writer. So um, let's get into some of the characters. So the two main characters are Billy, a.k.a. Ducati. If you see here, I have um, a symbol of a bartender. She's a bartender. She, she sings. Um, she's no, she teaches motorcycle lessons, and I left out the teacher. Um, but she's a stunning beauty. Um, she's, a, she's an army brat, right? She, her family went around the world, and that's why her roommate, who we're going to talk about in a second, um, calls her Japanese, um, <laughs> right? And uh, she's just out here living life until she runs into Keith, who's an electrical engineer. Um, he's divorced. Uh, as you can see, he don't have much going on because to me in the book, it's like he's just letting life happen to him. So, and I don't think this, uh, although this uh, emoji has light eyes like Keith does, I don't think it captures how fine she is claiming that Keith is. But <laughs> we do our best. Then we have, I had to add Carmen's parents. Y'all, you guys know why. <laughs> but we have Carmen. She's a lawyer. She's all about um, image and keeping her family together. And she gets that from her parents. They're from Jamaica. And Carmen doesn't play. And she's stunning. She might be out of step because uh, she fights so hard to keep an image and keep the job of keep the family together that she kind of let herself go. I mean, Everybody, the book makes it obvious that she is a stunning woman who just let herself go. And when she realized that Keith had a girlfriend, she started pulling herself back together, right? 
And then Carmen's parents, obviously the dad was a cheater back in the day. So, the, and the mom had to go get the dad and fight, fight for her family. So she's pushing Carmen to fight for her family. Then we have little Destiny. Little Destiny's 15. She goes to the best schools. She has the finest things. She lives in the nicest neighborhood. She comes from a two parent home, but she's looking for something. And she's going, for, for lack of a better word, she's going to the hood to find it. Um, I actually knew people like this growing up. Uh, they were, I'm gonna tell where I'm at a little bit, uh, doc to myself, but they they were from Palm Beach Gardens in Jupiter and they would be down in what we call the raw on the corner with dudes who were slaying and they had no business being there. <laughs> But they like the excitement, right? So that's what I get from Destiny. And then we have Vivian. Vivian is uh, Billy's roommate, and she's Korean. She emphasizes that a lot. <laughs> uh, she is into the wildlife. She she enjoys a good romp in the sack. Um, and she's engaged to Jacob, who is her five. Dating. dating. Like, hmm? They're dating. Yeah, they're well, okay. Yes, Billy says you guys are about to be engaged, you should be engaged, but they're dating, and she likes to entertain other men a lot. Um, because Jacob is amazing everywhere except in the bedroom. And you have Raheem, and he is from I don't want to tell is it Tegusakapla? I'm tearing it up, yes, <laughs> but he's the one that he wants Billy. Um, he wants her to teach him to ride, but you can tell he wants more than that. And his favorite book is The Alchemist. Last but not least, Mo and DeAndre, the DVD guys. I'm giving them their own spotlight. They're two teenagers that are hustlers who um, Destiny runs into and it goes down a crazy path. So, like I said, there was a lot, a lot of characters or whatever. So, um, let's talk about this. I'll let you guys really talk about what you think about the book a little bit, but don't get too deep about the story, the arc. Um, I'll have Daisy go first. What do you think of the story arc and the character development? <clears throat> well, I, I mean, from some of my previous um, book readings and previous amounts of ideas that I've I've said, right? It is intense, right? There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of hidden messages, right? Um, there's a lot of crying out for help in very sometimes verbal, sometimes nonverbal ways. And I felt like the story really made me reflect as a parent because I have three children. Mm -hmm. My oldest just went into the double digits. And I'm just thinking, right, within the next three to four years, they're going to hit teenage years mm -hmm. and then they're gonna hit the actual like like 15 to 18 right where you're just like oh my god and I find myself trying to put myself in the situation right where I would have someone like Destiny trying to reach out to me because that was the thing right the thing was chasing Destiny Destiny herself was getting herself like you mentioned right into situations where she had no business being in and she knew better right because her parents would lecture and lecture and lecture um but as a very typical teenager it just went in one year out the other right it's the I don't know what you're talking about like this sounds amazing um I haven't learned my lesson yet because I haven't gone through it so overall I did think that the progression of some of these character stories was good right the the part that I liked about Billy right is that she tried to stay genuine to herself and she did that throughout the whole course right she wants to be a good person even though she's in a bad situation she still tries to make good choices right Keith we'll talk about him I'm sure we will uh mm -hmm. he definitely does not progress he is a flat line uh Carmen also very flat line like she's very typical on who she is what she is and will stay within that structure uh but yeah I I thought that he did a fantastic job on developing certain characters and getting them into uh intertwine between each other and I think Carla and I mentioned this in in the previous conversation I love how he buttons everything up 
Mm -hmm. Tied it up with a nice little bow. Doesn't it seem logical? It might be because he's the, he's in STEM or an engineer because the way that he circles back around to make sure that everything is covered with the, which not many authors do. Yeah. yeah. And I think it, what I really liked about it, it's, it's like you mentioned, like very logical, but it's also very waterfall, like little decisions roll into bigger mm -hmm. decisions that roll into enormous decisions. Right. Can be very, very impactful and how little things here and there, um, even though you don't think that they're impactful at the moment, will roll into them, right, in the situation. So it's it's a very waterfall type theory, right? Like if one thing's happened, then the next, and then the next, and the next, and then the whole system can go down, um, very IT oriented, right? But you don't think about it when you see that first little indicator, right? It's mm -hmm. only when it escalates that you're like, oh mm -hmm. my God. Mm -hmm. So the guy was a really clever of him to weave that into the storyline. I'm glad you caught that. Before I move on to the other two, you said you uh, got some messages. Can you just talk about maybe one or two of them? Only reason I'm so intrigued is because I'm kind of taking you guys down the path of African-American lit. Like you're, you're my lovely Latina ladies. And I like to hear your point of view on like what, give me like one message you got out of it. So sometimes it's not about you. Sometimes it's about the situation, it's about the culture, right? And I felt like a lot of the characters were extremely selfish to bring it all about them. They are attacking me, they're doing this, but overall it's a overall message about the situation, the culture, and because it's not just African-American culture that has very similar uh, and I don't know if I want to use the word exploitation because Carla and I talked about this. We come most, the rest of us, right, come from the Latin community. Yeah. And we have very similar, like if you look at the country that we're from, right, there's a lot of exploitation. I mean, we're splashed on the news all the time for that particular piece. Mm -hmm. And I felt that if I would take it as a, message about me as a person right i would really go down a dark path and try to make myself into a situation where that would reflect me and that's that's not me that's not who i want to project as an individual as a professional so i have to find ways right of seeing that still embracing it right because it is my culture it is part of how I grew up, the mentality, almost the rhetoric that, right, that we're growing up with, like the demands of the culture on you. But it doesn't mean that I have to stay within that culture, right? I can Love break, it. I have to be strong enough to do that. So mm -hmm. that's the type of message that I was getting from him. Awesome. Carla? Uh, do you want me to talk about messaging or just uh, overall? Uh, the, the, the overall character development. And if you have a message that you got out of it, I would love to hear it. Yeah. I mean, I think that once again, the women in this book dominated the strength, mm -hmm. good and bad, you yeah. know, uh, pers yeah. the, the persistence in these women to do what they set out to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And nothing and no one is going to get in their way of that. Uh, so I thought from that perspective, I think that um, the author does a really great job of saying, hey, there's a lot of strength in in this community, right, in, in this gender. Um, I, you know, kind of to Daisy's point, man, I just, it was crazy to me the lengths at which people would go through to keep it wasn't even about happiness. They mm. weren't chasing their own happiness, but they were chasing like the image, what they were projecting, what they want the public to think of them, what they want others to think of them. And it was all, there were just a bunch of posers. I mean, uh, Billy was really, you know, kind of the one that was living to her. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and Vivian too, a little bit, yeah. you know, a little less with the dating, but um, that was just crazy to me. And then, I don't understand this attraction, you know, that maybe young people have for, again, it, I mean, it's, it's the hip hop culture, but in a sense, it's like the exploitation of women and mm -hmm. the, the danger that you could put yourself in by 
going out with strangers, going out, you know, with people that are up to no good. Um, mm -hmm. And that was the, the appeal of the danger. And, you know, I'm sure you've all, you've all seen like the signs about um, motorcyclists being uh, organ donors, right? They're like, yes. leaving. Mm -hmm. and, and again, like all this appeal to riding fast bikes and going like 95 on the highway and a hundred and whatever. And it's like, there's all this danger and this people are addicted to that. Um, yeah, that, that was just, it was all really, really interesting to me. Um, and then, you know, at the end, just how he, closes shop I thought was really brilliant I mean I thought he did just a great job with the book I I could he is a quality he was a quality writer is what I can get to at the end of the day I just thought that was amazing I, I really enjoyed that yes I love that Cindy I really don't have a whole lot to add that Daisy and, and Carla haven't already said um you know, Carla and I did, did talk about the book. Uh, it seems like uh, last month, I think it was probably last month. Um, and then just the, the ending, the, the everything kind of came together. That was unexpected, um, mm -hmm. I think, just because I've been let down so many times in all of these other books that you're like, well, what happens next? Like, how is this ending? I, I don't get it. Um, so I, I thought that, you know, the author did a really, really good job um with uh with that when it comes to character development um you can't agree more with with daisy in regards to her analysis there was a lot of just stagnation throughout with with some of those characters that's amazing yeah as for me like i said he's one of my favorite authors and i'm very familiar with his work um but this book stood out to me because of the name um the name is a perfect name for this book because it's chasing destiny, of course, the obvious, like you're chasing uh, the little girl, right? Cause she's missing, but it's also chasing destiny because you don't, Billy, who's kind of been toiling along with life. She feels like an orphan cause both her parents are gone. She's kind of just been living and doing her thing. And then she meets somebody she feel like she can actually build a life with. And he's stagnant, you know, he's, he's stuck. Um, and he's chasing his destiny of, cause he feels like if, the mistake he made is getting uh, married to this person or the marriage going downhill. And now, I mean, low key, the mistake that he feels like he made is that they, they had destiny. He loves destiny, but destiny's also quote unquote, a mistake. Remember she overhears them discussing having her because the mom had uh, endometriosis and fibroids or whatever. And she takes that in almost like, now that I'm thinking about it, almost like Regina on better than I know myself. So it's an assumption that you're the reason that your parents are unhappy, right? And so that takes destiny down a path to find her destiny. She's trying to find who she is. Is she the little rich girl from Bel Air? Or does she belong with um, the people who she looks up to in the hip hop videos? And you're right, exploitation was a huge theme in this. Um, the way she had to use her body to try to get the boys attention. Like her dad saw her and mom, her dad saw her as this innocent little girl. The mom saw her as herself. So she knew that the little girl was devious because she saw herself in her. And then she, the, the guy saw her as something to exploit. They knew she was a little girl. When they first taught her, they said they knew she wasn't 18. So it was like, it, and they went on this wild ride or whatever. And then Vivian. I thought it was interesting, um, Vivian and her sister, I can't remember what the sister's name is. Uh, they explored a lot of, Q, Q. there you go. Uh, they explored a lot of racial identity in this book. And I think it's because of how LA is set up. LA is very, very, like Florida's super mixed. LA is probably the one that's the most mixed after that. Um, so I think they explored so many themes and, and also threw in the motorcycle culture. So I think he did an amazing job. But like you guys said, I think Carmen and Keith fell flat because they both basically fell prisoner to their roles. Carmen said, we're going to be married. We're going to be a two family home. I don't care what you're talking about. I don't care what girlfriends you have. And that's why they went on that mission to take care of Billy and her situation with the baby. And, the, and it became a family affair. So 
Uh, I really like how the book uh, did that. Like he did an amazing job with that. So with that being said, let's get to one of our, my favorite parts. Um, who's your favorite character? I'm going to have Cindy go first. Me? Yeah. Uh, I definitely Vivian. I think she knew, I know she was kind of like a side character and she would pop in every now and then, but I just really liked her strength, uh, her commitment to her sister and the fact that she was constant, not, not just to her sister, but also to Billy, that relationship, that friendship that they have. And so, um, I thought, I, I don't know, she was, I was drawn to her. Um, the other characters were, uh, a little bit more difficult, um, I think, for me to to try to like mm -hmm. uh, for 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 a couple a couple reasons. I Carla and I talked about it. That's why she's smirking over there. Uh, but we can talk about that here in a bit. Mm. Carla, none. Okay, I, I... it's like a a hate most to hate least. Yeah, <laughs> there no, was another I... book like that, wasn't it? What other book we didn't like anybody? I forgot. I, I can't remember. But, well, a little magic. So the, the yeah, I would say true, that true. I would say that Billy was probably the one I had fewer issues with, but I still had a lot of issues with her. I mean, and you know, one of the things we didn't talk about in that last yeah, section yeah. was like the religion and you know God, because it's mentioned throughout the book and how people justify some of their terrible choices. Oh yeah. As, Godly, you know, and like God wants me to do this, and God what, and I'm like, oh, I, so no, none, zero. I hated. I them love all. that. Hated them, but all. but did but, you not like them because they did you not like them because they weren't built built up, or you just genuinely didn't like them because that's a different thing. Well, small see, town big magic, they were just terrible. Oh, right, right. No, so, <laughs> so I think that the author did an amazing job writing out these characters, like. They were so real to me that I was like, if these people materialize in front of me today and we're like, let's be friends, I'd be like, I don't like no. any of you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Love so it. That, that's a that's a that's a mark towards the care uh, towards the author that he just did such like you know they tell you that when you watch a movie you know that you're watching a good actor or actress when mm -hmm. when you know you're like cry when they cry you sympathize mm -hmm. them like I had very little sympathy like they were just all hateful all of them yeah. yes. They were. Mm, I, I'm trying to think, is there, I don't know, David. <laughs> yeah. So I started thinking, right? Because I'm like, Vee's going to ask us very particular questions. And mm -hmm. this one I definitely struggled with. I, I would have been in the same boat for Carla, except for one minor character that we don't really talk about, but the actual motorcycle, the Ducati. That poor motorcycle <laughs> was loyal, <laughs> was vibrant. Did everything mm. I needed to do to get mm. the the ending that it got was the saddest thing ever. So my vote goes to the motorcycle, the Ducati. That's I love favorite. that. I love that you chose the Ducati. I appreciate that. That was definitely its own. The Ducati and the pink, I mean, the yellow bikini were definitely their own characters uh, <laughs> in the book. Um, who's my favorite character? I asked you guys and I wasn't even prepared for this question. <laughs> it took me a while uh, to get to mine. Oh my God. I'm going to say, believe it or not, Destiny. So when I say favorite, I don't mean good. Um, Destiny. So Destiny is the ultimate supervillain. I, I see the, ult the ultimate supervillain. Um, the way that they, how she played the different roles. Um... <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. I just saw like your comment. <laughs> Yeah, see what the bike was a Dutch. <laughs> but yeah, um, Destiny, because she really did drive the story. She really did drive the story. Um, I loved how she played, she had a duality. So she had to play an innocent little girl to the, she drove that innocent little girl to the end with her father. She didn't care what anybody else thought about her. And that's most what most daddy little daddy's little girls are. Like to whip to her father, she was gonna be that innocent person. The mom, she had respect to the mom's mission. 
she didn't because when her mother even though her and her mother were mirrors of each other and so when they saw each other's devious plans like i see you because i am you i see you like remember when I see you next tuesday that was very in emphasized in there i see you and she but she used it to her advantage mom drop me off to grandma and grandpa's they thought she was innocent too only for her to sneak out to go on her adventure and then when she realized that billy was pregnant and that was the only thing that kept her her family from being together even though she knew billy was the only thing that made her dad happy she still followed through with her mom's mission still so the family was the family the family was going to be together so yes and then also her revenge when that horrific thing happened to her, how methodical she was in getting the revenge on each character that did her dirty. I, re I respect that <laughs> methodicalness. I respect that evil and it's behind the eyes of a 15 year old girl. So that's why she's my favorite character, but that does not mean good. <laughs> so now that I'm thinking about it, that's what I, that's what I got from that. But speaking on that, Let's get to the other side, if I can find it. Who is the worst character? I want to go first. Go ahead, Carl. Get it off your chest. <laughs> well, again, like, the ones I had the most issues with. I, okay, so this is kind of funny because I dated a lot of electrical engineers. Mm. I did, a mm. number of them, right? Yeah. And I was like, here was Keith, an electrical engineer. And I was like, oh, what a loser. Loser, yeah. <laughs> loser, loser. Poor me. All this stuff happens to me. Yes. I, you know, oh, it's so and so's fault. And so -and, -so. and like he took absolutely no responsibility. And like, I think what wasn't there in the beginning when when um when Billy was telling him, you know, I'm pregnant. Um, he was like, How did that happen? And she was like, Well, it didn't happen to osmosis, <laughs> you know, and like, oh my. It was, he was so pathetic. I'm like, why are women so attracted to this man? Like, you know, and it's happened to me where like, I meet someone who's physically not that attractive out of the gate, but like you get to know them. They have a really amazing personality. And then all of a sudden you're, you're, that attraction level is rising, you know, um, physical side to side because they have more to offer, right? This was like the opposite of that. He started off with really good looks. I'm like, the more you got to know him, like, the least attractive yeah. this man should have been. What has yeah. he got to offer? He's got nothing. Like, and nothing. even from the standpoint of like being supportive, or you know, because sometimes you know the man doesn't have to be the the leading role here. Like he could be a, a supporting role. He doesn't have to be the lead in in anything, right? But he didn't even have that, and it was all about covering his own ass. You know, like, can you do this for me, please? And oh my god, it was he was pathetic. What a loser. I hated Keith the most. Yeah, yeah. You just brought up like, yeah, like I haven't dated a bunch of electrical engineers, but I have dated people who act like life is happening to them. Yeah. Like life is just happening to them. Yeah, they're and victims of their own circumstance. Bad. Yeah. It's gonna sound bad, but for me, I um it's worse for me when it's a man. I don't know why that could be totally patriarchy massage whatever but i i when it when it's a man and he keeps saying stuff is happening to him i'm like yeah stuff happens to people but but here's the thing about men i i dismiss i dismiss people <laughs> left and right when they're victims of their own circumstance all right go ahead daisy um i feel that women it might be patriarchy but not necessarily yours right society tells women you can't succeed without a man Right. Or very similar. I think we talked about this a little bit with the book Lean In, right? Mm -hmm. Where people don't, if someone, if a female, right, tends to be more assertive, um, she's called bossy. But if a man is assertive, right, he he has a very like he's showing leadership. Right. Qualities. Right. And so in and, and I hate saying this, right? But it, it feels like society beats us down where the mentality is more normalized as a mm -hmm. female right of things happening to them because you have the whole like from almost your birth right people are telling you like you need someone to succeed to help you to be there and so when they blame it on someone else right 
it seems logical. But for a man who's been told handed everything from birth, being like, you need to succeed. How do we get there? Right. You're giving them all the possibility of success and for them to not succeed. Right. And to blame it on someone else, it tends to be a little bit harder to uh, assimilate. Right. Because again, they have been given almost like that little golden spoon, like, Oh, you're a man, so you're expected to do this. So let's get you here. Let's get you there. Even like sometimes with medical professions, like I've heard horror stories. People are like, I'm in a lot of pain as a female. And they're just like, oh, you're just being a mom. Oh, you're not sleeping. Yep. You're just a mom. But the same issues on a man. Oh, my God, you're, you know, this is happening. Let's run these tests. Let's figure out what's wrong with you. I'm like, why? Why is that double standard then? And it's been there since the beginning. So, again, I get more upset when a man says things like that because I'm like, you've been given so many handouts throughout the course just because you were born with a Y chromosome. Like, don't blame it on other people. I'm gonna I'm not gonna say devil's advocate only because I, you know, there's a, a male podcast that I jump on every once in a while. So I'm gonna say this. <laughs> That's for them. They feel like we we don't listen to their feelings and they're not allowed to feel and go through uh things we don't validate like we don't validate them. And so I'm going to say he may feel homeless. He, I'm not, I don't know if he was down there homeless in that one bedroom apartment, but he may feel hopeless <laughs> because remember, all his money was tied up in the house. Everything was gone. But he had no issue, like you said, laying up with Billy when they were having those amazing scenes. You know, that's what Eric Jerome did. He is known for his scenes. But when the fruit of those scenes came out, it's like we don't have he spent almost there was like almost three or four pages of him telling her to get rid of it um in a very engineer type way but moving right along cindy <laughs> first character uh well i i definitely agree with carla um i very much disliked he um i think for me it would have been carmen um, mm. she was just so full of herself at every single moment, only thinking about her, what it is that she needed to do to, to keep this facade, um, if, if you will. And it just seemed like she was doing it just to please her parents because I mean, in, in the, in, in the course of the story, it comes out that she also had, you know, a relationship mm -hmm. after Keith had left. Um, so it, it was, it, she, she was just spiteful and, and mean and just absolutely a bad human. Yeah, it turns out they had Billy. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, she was manipulative too. Oh, yeah. Was... With her daughter. It was and, and, and yeah, it was it not not a person I want to have a beer with. I'm trying to figure out how she got the divorce revoked. And then speaking of um her having a relationship after um First of all, the reason I'm spoiling it, I have no issue spoiling it, is because this book is older than, <laughs> than all get out. So, but it's still worth uh, a read. Um, the fact that her and Billy obviously have the same taste in men. Uh, <laughs> you know why? The alchemist. I'm going to leave that there. But um, yeah, Carmen definitely was about image. Daisy? Um, maybe her parents feel like in this is kind of going back to like the Bible and the whole God thing, but it says, right. The, at least in Spanish, um, like the, in, in Spanish it's called maldición, like the, the curse, right. Of the parents that's passed down through seven generations. Right. And so you see Carmen's parents, right. And they've put on this facade of, being affluent Jamaicans. But like you mentioned, right, the husband steps out for the husband to then <laughs> turn around and be like, Keith, you need to know where you're like standing. It's like, you went through the whole, like it's the pot kettle, like pot calling the kettle black type of thing. Like it's hard on that piece, but also the fact that they are slowly, because <laughs> Carmen, didn't have those ideas until right someone had to put the seeds in her mind to have her grow up see them have them flourish right to then turn around and do the same thing to destiny right so this whole scene and then i put it in the chat right here's me looking at back at you 
-hmm. And every woman in that family unit, it is a mere reflection of each other being mean and spiteful and not caring about happiness, caring about image. So they rather have a family unit together miserable than to show society a broken, a, and I'm going to make bunny quotes, broken family and be happy uh, or trying to find your own happy. Because I, I, I strongly feel that Carmen would have been happier, right, with her lover if she pursued that right without having to get her image back on track and then destroy that love interest and then destroy the other love interest so yeah i i think bitterness right is never a good fertilizer for any type of relationship and if you find yourself in a relationship like that just know it's it's just gonna grow it's going to be rooted in you and your bitterness with that one person is going to spread to the rest of your relationships. So I do want to blame her parents for that because again, slowly and progressively, you see that training happening to Carmen who then turns around and trains her own daughter with that very same mentality. But the other thing is, you know, cause this kind of goes to like the whole self-respect thing too. Mm -hmm. Like the grandma taught Carmen essentially like you got to put your self-respect aside and got to, you have to get your man back and get your family back. Right. Yeah. And a uh, hero's destiny who was like, I've got a lot of self-respect and I am not going to let those people, you know, victimize me. Right. And so here she, she goes through that, but then she's out for revenge, like violent, violent revenge. So I felt like there was an escalation you know, it, they weren't all mirror images. Like they were progressively getting worse mm, yeah, true. And as they went on, like generation after generation. And, you know, had destiny been 18, like she could have been locked up for the rest of her life for the mm. things that she did, you know? And so I, it was, that was just crazy to me, the, the progression, the escalation of all the, the violence and the. But uh, do you really think that destiny's mentality of, I'm not going to let them victimize me. Like she was, she called herself like the victim. Like she put herself in a victim mentality herself, right? Yeah, horrible things happened to her. I'm not even gonna, it's like, but, but she unfortunately walked her little, what what do they call them? Baby fat jeans straight into that. Yeah, baby fat, yeah. <laughs> and if she, and this is where I, I, I think about it as a parent, right? Because in situations, Right. Where one destiny has reached out to her dad and be like, hey, mom is hurting me. Straight up say mom is hurting me for the dad to just be like, get over yourself, destiny. Right. Is training her to accept violence from her own family. Right. From her loved ones. Um, and then and I think Carla, you and I talked about this. Right. Keith always said that his heyday was back in the hood and doing all this stuff and told, oh, yeah. put all these stories, right, about how happy he was and all of this stuff, right, which then put an image of finding happiness back there for her. And then on the other side, right, you see Carmen saying, like, everything is bad, everything is horrible, right? But Carmen is just bitter and horrible, right, and beats her. Why would she listen to that? Like, why would she want to, like, rise up against it? So it's two conflicting societies, two conflicting images, right, in Destiny. And all she sees as a 15-year-old girl, right, we talk about kids being innocent, right? We train them to have these conversations. The rhetoric that sometimes comes out of my kid's mouth, I'm like, Oh my God. And I have a conversation with my husband. I'm like, hey, um, our kids are spewing X, Y, and Z. He's just like, oh, maybe I should not say that. I'm like, yes, maybe you shouldn't say that. Right. So we project a lot of our internal everything, right, onto our kids. And again, here's me looking back at you. So if I ever get mad at my kids being mouthy, oh, did I probably deserve it because I was a mouthy teenager. Or I was this and I was that, right? So am I saying it's justification? <laughs> no, uh, for her actions. But I do 100% agree that by Carmen making herself the victim in Keith and Billy's relationship, 
yeah. by making herself the victim of her parents' relationship, right, has then been pushed on to destiny, right? How dare Billy try to take her college money? Yes. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. How dare these people take advantage of her while she put herself in the situation? How dare everyone do this to her because she was just there? And it's just like, no, honey, like you put yourself in that situation. Could mm -hmm. you have talked to people like your dad about certain things? Sure. Has your dad like he he seemed more open about conversation about his life and Billy than Carmen did, right? So yeah. they talked about even taking care of the baby, right? Where she could babysit and do that. Like she sounded happy, but the moment she found out that Billy was taking her college money and God forbid she went to Southern California University instead of Harvard, right? God forbid she even got a, a, a low class education. That's when she flipped. And I think mm -hmm. that was a lot of the, the victimization on her. But again, all different perspectives. No, this is awesome. Like, I really like how how deep you guys are digging into the book. Like, um, I've thought about these things. All of those things are true. But since you guys already called out who I probably would have chose, I'm just going to do a special shout out uh, to Mo and DeAndre, the DVD kings. <laughs> do a special shout out to them. Um, They were... I think that they were, okay, so there were several things that were in the book that highlighted some of the issues in LA, specifically, that let you know you were in LA. A couple things. There was the, remember the the lady whose baby wouldn't stop crying? Um, to show that in the, and what happened to the baby, that, that was a theme of showing that women need help and mental help, and sometimes people don't hear their cry. Symbolism of that. Uh, the billboard of the police chief's daughter being uh, unalived, uh, that was a theme in there. I think he, he uh, used Mo and DeAndre as a theme of exactly, Carla, what you just mentioned, how misogyny and objectification is glorified in the new generation and hip hop, and it has affected the young ladies. It's actually relevant today with the big, um, to do about Sexy Red and Sukiana and all these uh, lady rappers that come out and they're very, very, very over-sexualized. Um, I have to say it that way for YouTube. Um, and ladies taking on the mantle that their body is the only way that they're going to move ahead. So Destiny went, go, went to go look for that happy, good life that her dad talked about all the time. Remember when she went to go try to, when she went to go get their attention, right? She started doing the mo, the dance. Uh, they started looking at her body. It was obvious that she was a, a young girl, but she kept trying to prove that she was womanly to them. They were young. They were black. They were hustlers. They were making money. But if you think about it, everything was tied to the objectification of women. Even when they had Q and um, the irony, Raheem's sister, I forgot what her name is. Lupe. And Lupe, yes, when they had cute, you're so it was awesome. her niece, yes, niece. yes, <laughs> niece. Uh, the niece and uh, the sister of Vivian, they were jumping in on, on, they were trying to prove themselves too. Remember, they were jumping that as soon as she walked up, they seen a new young hot thing, they were like, Oh, okay, she's trying to take our spot. That's yes, you, not for Lupe, yeah. is right, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. oh. So you no. like, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got her comeuppance. <laughs> yes, and Destiny got in and like automatically. It was almost like a prison movie if you think about it. Like she had to come in and she had to be like, oh, I gotta make sure that they don't attack me. So she came in, she busted up Q or whatever, messed her up. And a lot of, I don't know if you know, I'm sure you guys do know this. A lot of times when somebody want to get you, they mess with your beauty, right? If you're a beautiful girl, they I know they used to do that crap a lot in Belgrade. I'm not saying they're doing other places, but they'll, they'll get your face. So instead of them stopping it, what they do, they started recording it. Okay, so I think they were trying to prove their manhood by showing that they can get these little girls to do all this stuff. They didn't care. Remember when they were riding their cars, they were playing the adult videos. And then what they did, at, they let her, let, let's pull in Goldie. Goldie was a single mother that was a hustler selling whatever, whatever. 
the whole time they saw Destiny as a mark. Destiny thought she was getting fitting in and all this stuff like that. So to me, they're the equivalent. Destiny in that point becomes Little Red Riding Hood. And the surrounding and the people are all the big bad wolf. Except, like you said, Daisy, she kind of went along with it. And when she when when the wolf did what wolves do, <laughs> all right, she woke up and was like, not today. And then that's when the terror terror started for them. So, and they got their comeuppance. Not we can't say it's too violent what happened, but they got their comeuppance. But they also are a part of the system. They pro- like I said, they probably used all that stuff with the girls and everything to prove their manhood. The girl, the ladies are trying to prove their worth by trying to fit in and do all this crazy objectification stuff. They were putting the objectification on display, hence creating a crazy system where everybody is being um victimized. So I just wanted to give them yeah, go ahead. No, no, exploited. I mean it's it's yes, that's the word. Yeah. It's horrible. It's just yeah. horrible. Well, um, it mm-hmm. it, no, it does. And, you know, going back to kind of what Daisy was saying about like being mothers and how we talk to our kids and whatnot. And since my kids were little, because our mother would just say, no, don't do that. Don't. I'm telling you, I'm the adult. Don't do it. Right. And no, we had some hard knocks growing up because mm-hmm. we just, we're just like, oh, well, she said not to do it, but like, what do I do it? You know, and it's like, oh, this really bad thing could happen, right? So, like, yeah. I will tell my kids, don't climb here because if you fall, you can break your head. And you know, I'll tell them, I'll tell them horrific stories. Like, I've seen kids bust their heads open and had to get staples across their head. You know, I've seen stitches. I've, and then if I haven't seen it, I'll pull it up on the internet. You don't want to brush your teeth. This is what happens to kids who don't brush your teeth. See, see Ooh, the, not yeah. the teeth. And they're just like, <laughs> oh, well, don't you? I'm like, when somebody, like, you, there was that whole thing a few years ago where kids were eating the detergent pods, right? Yes. When I'm just like, if anyone, I'm like, look at how pretty they are. Like, I'll, I'll bring it up. I'm like, it doesn't that look like so delicious. I'm like, this will kill you. Don't ever eat this. Don't ever ask anyone to eat this. So, um, you know, I'm always trying to tell. <laughs> not you traumatizing the kids. <laughs> no, but look, I want them to know, and I want them to know why not. I don't want them to be like, no, my mom said not to. I want them to be like, no, that'll kill me, like that. or that'll kill you. Like, you know, for them to have a thought process for why we do or don't do certain things. So, yeah, as horrible. And, and so that's why, like, and, and, you know, maybe this goes to, like, the difference between Keith as a man and, um, you know, Destiny. Like, he was glorifying his hood days. Well, yeah, it's totally different from a man, for a man than it is for a it's young true. girl, you know? Yeah. And so he could have been like, you know, yeah, I, I talk about that, but I saw some terrible things, too, you know? And, and I don't know. So I thought that both he and Carmen failed as parents uh, yes. in many, many ways. That's horrendous. Yeah. That's horrendous. Um, and I'm sure they thought they were doing well. So let's take a quick second break to remind everybody because it's definitely going to be replay gang because we woke up super early to do this for y'all because we love y'all. So we know everybody's going to see this later. <laughs> so. All right. If you're digging the content, get hit me with a like. If you watch more than one video, hit me with a subscribe because you got at this point you're lurking in the bushes. We need you to come out and make yourself clean. We know you're here. We, you know, we know you think we're pretty. You're here. You like what we're talking about. Subscribe so you can see more. <laughs> so let's uh do our last my well, one of my favorite parts. We're gonna do the um no, no, let me get to it. Let's get real down and dirty about what you think about the book. And then we'll do the rating and then we'll skip off into our Sundays like everybody else. But um, let's start off with Cindy. Let's get real. What do you think about the book? I had a really rough time getting into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to, to, to physically read the book. Um, I, I didn't listen to it. So maybe, maybe listening to, to, to the book would have uh, uh, grabbed my attention in a, in a, different, in a different way. Um, but it, 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 it took me a while to get into the story, like really want to know what was happening next. Um, overall, I think it was very well written. I'm really glad that I read it. Um, I don't 
I think I might have to explore the author a little bit more uh, and find one of his stories that really grabs me and that I, it resonates with me. But I, I don't know if this one happened to be it. Uh, but I'm really glad I read it. I'm, I'm really glad that you exposed me uh, to to this this type of genre. So thanks, V. Awesome. Just to, just to put it out there, this particular story was considered out. Well, his later stuff is more like this, not like this type of story. But this is like the one story he has like this. So the um, most of his stories were either in um, lower class neighborhoods or really, really, really upscale neighborhoods. So this was like a mix of the, of the two worlds. And also, yeah, so it was more hodgepodge <laughs> his other stories. So as he went down this path, uh, and also his earlier stories also weren't as, as sexual. They weren't this raunchy. So this was totally a one-off from, from him and brought a lot of people just to at least see him as an author. So, um, Carla? Are we giving it Smarties yet or no? No. Not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I I liked it. I mean, I thought it was very well written. I, I listened to the audio audiobook also. Or not also, but I listened to it. I think Daisy did too. And um I really, really liked it. Like I it wasn't too long of a book. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing stuff out with my with my plants. You know, y'all know I'm a plant addict. Not not that plant, the orchid. <laughs> the orchid. Um, Clear it up, mama. Uh, yeah. So many people have asked me, like, do you grow up? I'm like, no. no. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, and I was just like, I mean, I there was no moment where I was bored. I mean, in the beginning, I was like, okay, what's happening? Okay, he's an electrical engineer. And then I was just like, oh, 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 oh. you know, like one thing after it was suspense filled the entire time and it, it was stress inducing you know because yeah. i'm just like <gasps> i like to stress out loud yeah <laughs> but i i really liked it i i'm really glad i read it and or listened to it and um i could it, it was just a quality book in my opinion like you enjoy books for different reasons like it's not a story that i would be like oh i read you know like it's crazy like ai i i, I did talk to andy about it or my husband mm -hmm. about it and i was like I was like, it's just so crazy. He's like, it's he's he's like, it sounds crazy. I'm like, it was justice. <laughs> it was really crazy. So for a book, you know, for a book to initiate that and like, and also you read books that are entertaining and they're kind of like a pleasure to read, but you got nothing to say about them afterwards. You know, mm -hmm. you're just like, yeah, I like that. I'm glad I read mm -hmm. it. Done. Mm -hmm. You know, but this was like so thought provoking and discussion inducing that um i'm really really glad i read it i love it daisy um also very happy that i read it <clears throat> uh sure I like, sure <laughs> I, know, I mean there i feel like i don't mm. get too many like again you guys know i read to get away like mm -hmm. get away from all the stress so being able to have other things added um to my collection is is good uh the other part and it, so there's there's a couple of things that carla and i talked about and i i wish the author would have been able to like answer my questions but the big question that i had was keith's um unemployment and mm. I, carla, I was like how beautiful was it that when he started to have issues with carmen he would lose his job Mm. him in a corner where he mm. would have to rely on Carmen or like would want to come back so I'm like did she have because she's pretty high up there I'm like does she have any pool? I thought he alluded to it I, 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 don't thought know. She pulled, I thought she pulled strings she knew people she was well connected yeah. well so he I, exactly right so she pulled strings to get Destiny on the news so that they could find her right and give the mm. reward so I'm like when I read that part, I was like, did she pull any strings to get him fired? So mm -hmm. you know, in the book, you did hear, right, that the the first company went out of business and he was pigeonholed in it, right? So it was really hard for him to find a second job. But that second job just happened to be lost when they were right about to finish that divorce decree type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, the timing was very suspicious. He, yes. yep. So he has to refile for his divorce decree, right, which costs money. 
loses his job. He can't even afford his place anymore. So now he has to make a decision, right? Go with Billy or go with the well-educated, super financially stable. And wife. go back to his house. Right. And with destiny, right? So yeah, it was one of those things that I'm like, ooh, this is this seems a little too nice. And because mm -hmm. he's so good at button things together, I'm like, did this actually have anything to do with it? But um and, and these were the types of thoughts that I had, right? As and I'm very detail oriented, mm -hmm. right? As as a project manager, you have to look at all the details to try to make a story. So little things like that would come up and I'm like, Ooh, I wonder if this has anything. And the moment that, uh, what is it? Re Re regime or Raheem? Raheem. Raheem. Well, Raheem started going after Billy a couple of times. Right. And then they alluded to Carmen having something. Oh my God. Just thought about that. Within like the second time, right. Raheem was just being like super push. And I'm like, and I called up Carla. I'm like, tell me he's, He's Carmen's like, and this is this is the Asian way of saying it, right? It's like a be like. Anyways, I was just like Carla, like, and she's like, "How did you pick up on that?" I'm like, "That he's pushing this too much." I'm like, "There has to be something behind him," and I, I'm again, oh there's so many little things like leading up to it that I'm just like, "Ooh," um, even and then Carla, I went back to the scene where uh, Billy has a uh, accident, right? And she she always refers to the driver as a she because she does turn around and see them. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, there's like all these little things coming together. And this is my first time reading it, right? So if I go back, like I, I'm the type of person that gets obsessed with details and I start pulling things and I'm like, oh, this is connected to this. This is connected to that. And Carl's just like, I just want the story. I don't care about it. <laughs> Although at that, I mean, I talked to both you and Cindy about this. I thought that the person that ran Billy off the road was the grandma, not the yeah, grandpa. Yeah, and I think so too. I think you're right. But it wasn't the heels, right? No, he but th there was enough in there, enough yes. illusion in there where I was like, I think it was the grandma, not the... And so when they went and arrested the grandpa, I was like, he took the fall for her. And looking See, at I her, don't know. See, mm, I look. Like that. No, I like that. No, I like that. Because at the end, he took the fall and probably because he's the man. He feels guilty that he cheated on the wife exactly. Um, exactly. such a long time ago. But, you know, I thought about that, but I wasn't sure because remember when um, when they met in the Starbucks? How was how convenient that Raheem was in the Starbucks when the wife was come? Oh my! Look, my mind yeah. said, even oh. though even though he comes back and it's just like you know at the like we Carmen and I weren't together for six months and she's like the first time I saw her again was at the Starbucks where you were there and I'm like yeah oh, <laughs> like how convenient yeah. um and here's the other thing that was that was one of the major topics that I was talking to Carla about because we had a little bit more time he goes and stalks Keith right because he's gonna give him a piece of his mind and that's where he meets Billy and then just to happen to get more information right oh my friend Jacob is dating the friend let me get some more information about her so he starts researching her oh right that's why he's being the villain we didn't even know if he was the villain Not well, I don't villain. I don't even know if he's a villain, but he he's 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 definitely he was colluding. He was colluding in some kind of shape or form. But here's the other thing, right? And then you talk about his niece. Oh no, who could possibly be like who could possibly not like my niece? She's the best. She's this. I'm like she was the head exploitationer. Yes, Lupe was playing on it. Yes. And I'm Lupe like, no, no, no. And then again, this is me as a parent, how naive are we as adults of our children, right? Of the people that we love and give them all of these passes, right? Even though there's all these little red flags, right? That could possibly come in or they hide them. And so like, in my mind, my biggest takeaway from this is how do I make my relationship so well with my kids where they can trust me about mm -hmm things that are happening, right? Yeah, How do yeah. I approach them, right? Yeah, because yeah, as kids, right, they'll have to tell me, like, mom, I messed up in this way. Like, how do I react in a way to build trust with them now so that when they get in situations later, right, they feel comfortable 
coming to me. I've had conversations with my two boys, right? They're my oldest. And I say, hey, in the future, if you ever feel that you're backed into a corner because you've made a mistake and you can't get out, please come to me. Please understand yes. that I'd rather hear from you and try to help you than you get stuck in a situation where there is no return. And they're just like looking at me. I mean, they're like 10 and 8. I'm like, what are you talking about? It doesn't matter. About? You got to get them started right? early. You just had a tragedy here that involved a relationship thing. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. not just that, right? So if Destiny mm. woken up, right, gone back home, had a nice enough relationship with her dad or her mother where she didn't feel like she was going to get judged. She was going to get all this other stuff. Even the moment she comes back, right. Carmen attacks her in uh -huh. such a way, right. That she's just like, Oh, right. She is in a point that if she would have had a little bit more trust in her parents and her parents would have taken her in more, right. Or helped her out. She could have worked through some shape or form and not become the person that she became right? Instead of lashing out. So I don't want my kids to feel in that situation, right? If there is an unplanned pregnancy when they're like teenagers, right? I would rather have them come to me than make poor choices and affect them for the rest of their lives. So again, how do I become a better parent? And I think he sparked that because I've, I've seen it in other novels, right? But you don't see how big of an impact parents are in their decisions and the way that they interact with their kids like you did in this book and i was like "Ooh, yeah. i am i am a mm -hmm. cornerstone i'm a keystone in this kid's life that if mm -hmm. i do not react in a way i can lose them from here right the, the little nuggets right the little little things that will grow up into big waterfalls and then i'll just lose them yeah. so how do i become a better parent now to help support them later. So that I'm is, really happy I read this. I love that. I love that. That is awesome. Hey, how can I top that? No. <laughs> I love it. Um no, as I said, I'm I really, really enjoyed this book from the I, I think I read it in my 20s. And like I said, I love the different points of view of the different characters. I love how he closes every even down to Goldie and her magical pills. Uh how he closed that gap on uh, Goldie, you know, what she got, she got the splash. That's how her story ended. Um, but even fleshing out that uh, character, but what really, really hit me is that he was such a passenger in his own life that where he ended up just, hit me to my soul like I don't even know like where he and not to feel sorry for him it's like at some point it because I went through a divorce right um at some point you kind of got to be like do I really like what am I willing to give up to be free and be my authentic self and not everybody is willing to do that but um like I said Eric Jerome Dickey is masterful at doing uh SDX scenes like through the book you're like Yes, not Keith so much because he was such a loser. Um, <laughs> but other things like he he interweaves it into the story. But like I said, I think he's a master at putting in details. Like you literally feel like you're in that city. You literally un like everything. It's like he builds. A, he's a world builder, but he's not a fantasy world builder like Harry Potter or, or Avatar. He's building reality. He's it's it's gritty. It's powerful, and I believe that we all got so many messages out of this. And the message that I got out of it was: don't take yourself down just for an image. If it is not your authentic self, you are going to end up lonely and miserable in a life, basically a coffin that you created. Be your authentic self and do what you got to do to become uh, to be live the life that you want to live. That's why I got out of it. And also, I totally agree with you guys in regards to the parenting. Your words are powerful. Your actions are even more powerful, and you are put, leaving an indelible mark on your children. Your children are a mirror of you. Do you like what you see, and how did they get there? So. Uh, with that being said, let's give it a rating. Uh, Cindy, 
Uh, how many Smarties out of five? I'm going to give this book a three and a half Smarties. So I, I, I enjoyed the story. Uh, I, I mentioned to Carla before, I'm like, I'm not getting into it, but um, I, I think I needed to go a little bit deeper uh, the way that, that Daisy did to, to fully appreciate that, uh, all of that background and all of the different connections. Um, again, I had a, you know, Kindle read it uh, and, you know, at night. So maybe, maybe that was it. Like as my brain is winding down, uh, my attention wasn't totally there. I was going to say the audio book is top tier. It's almost like you're watching a movie. So um, if you ever get a chance, just give it a try and let me know later which thing. Yeah, yeah, the no, that, that's, the audio that's, book a, is, yeah. that's what, what Carla had, had said too. And, you know, there's a couple mm -hmm. of other books that are definitely better in audio mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. than they are in, in, in print. So I think this may have been one that I just needed to explore in the audio format mm -hmm. instead. Yeah, no, I love the honest feedback. All right, three and a half out of five Smarties. Carla? I think I'm going to give it a four and a half. Woo! It was masterfully put together. Mm -hmm. The characters were interesting. The story was interesting. Um, it had enough detail in it that, you know, my detail-oriented sister really uh, <laughs> found and pulled on those threads. Um, I like the, the arc of the story. Um, I just appreciate a well-organized book. Yes. Kind of uh, well research book. And I think I may have mentioned this or, you know, when I started reading it and like uh, Billy is driving away from the Starbucks and she's getting on all these highways and stuff. You know, we go, uh, my family and I go into Southern California and I go into Southern California a lot for, for uh, my hobbies. And I'm like, I've been on that highway. Like, it's a detail. You know, I'm just like, I'm sure, I've, I'm sure I've taken that turn. Holy moly. Like, it just. I had these flashbacks of me driving there, you know, so I, I thought he was super well organized and like, gosh, even, even the detail of, like you mentioned earlier, Avi, the, the woman with the baby crying, mm -hmm. and how that came full circle and you found out about it, you know, and I think a lot of books, they'll throw out these details at you, but then the, there's no meaning behind it. You know, it's just, they're just adding color. Right. And th this mm -hmm. is why, uh, this is why I don't love books that are like, painting a whole i'm like i don't care i don't care because the next moment we're going to move on to a different part of the book and you're going to go finished. all over again but like every detail that I, I he he included enough details in there to make those details relevant later if that makes mm -hmm. sense like yeah, everything I had to mean everything had a purpose he was a very efficient writer in that you know and it's like you don't realize that starting but at the end you're like I, Oh, and loop, you know, and loop is like Raheem's. Oh, oh. yeah, and, yeah. And Raheem and, oh my gosh, it was like all interwoven so well. I love that, Daisy. I'm gonna give it a four. Um, I do agree, hundred percent. Well written, um, detailed oriented, fantastic. The thing that the reason why I didn't give it a five um, is mostly because it was slowly building up, and I feel like. He hits you with a lot of negative situations right off the back. And you're just like, it's it's almost like a shock. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, very similar to Cindy, even though I was in the audiobook, I had to pause and like do several days of me just like trying to calm back down, trying to like. Oh my God, not triggered. Not <laughs> back in. Uh, but the latter half of the book, again, the, the circling back and putting everything mm -hmm. into place, right? The folding back in was a lot easier. So I would say the first half is very hard to get into, right? Because again, like you mentioned, like it triggers you. You're just like, oh my God. Oh, oh my goodness. Like, and it's just one thing after the other. Like I have a daughter and I'm just like, oh dear God. It, like, I was telling Carla, like, <laughs> should I have her read this book for her to understand that bad things can happen, right? Do I pr try to prepare her in life as she gets older? Because of course they're going to be teenagers. They're going to be like, yeah. you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, actually, like, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, look at this. the yeah. fact that I survived that time of my life, like should give me credit. But again, slow burn and then it's like the roller coaster, right? It's like you going up that that one big hill, and then at the bottom, you're just like, "Okay, I'm glad I did that." Like super. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that that's a really good way to describe it, Daisy. That that roller coaster ride. Yeah, I I definitely agree. It was slow burn at first, and then all of a sudden, just like the 
hits you. Yes. And then you're like, holy shh. And, 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 then, and then the book's done, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say That's absolutely hard. a read. Power mm -hmm. through the first, at least if you do audiobook, like the first five hours and then the last five hours, you're just like, woo. So. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I really like that a lot. So for me, because I wasn't even thinking about a half, um, I did four out of five Smarty. It's very hard for you to get a five for me. I'm trying to think of what books are five to me. Um, so I totally agree with you guys. In the beginning, I guess, you know, books have a lot more time to build character versus a movie. And we may be an instant gratification society, and that's what the issue is. Um, but it takes you on a major, major thrill ride. And like, and it's like being on a motorcycle. I mean, everything about it, the analogies are there. Like she's on the motorcycle, it's dangerous. She doesn't know if she's gonna make it home. There's different people trying to take her out while she's on the motorcycle. Um, there's parts where she, you know, the one, uh, her one nemesis on the motorcycle, the young lady that actually wants to be with her. Um, and her ending, that was crazy. So like, you can see the different paths and like I said, it truly earned its name, Chasing Destiny. What are you willing to do? Where are you willing to go to go into your destiny? So I really appreciate um, Eric John Vicky for, for bringing the story to us. I thought it was amazing. So before we say our final words, you know, I got to, you know, I'm an author too, and but I'm, it's a children's book. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah, I do know what I was thinking. I'm a children. Uh, but I can't wait to do my adult stuff. But either way, <laughs> let me go ahead and play this real quick. So this video is sponsored by You Don't know, Location, the book. Um, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So check it out. And uh, believe it or not, these ladies were a part of the journey in creating this book. Uh, the recipes are in there specifically because of Cindy. Uh, but they were my beta readers. <laughs> so they were my beta readers. We I love them so much. I adore them. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys say your goodbyes and then we're gonna head off into the sunset. Uh, Daisy. Had so much fun. Great book. I mean, I feel like I'd say a lot in a lot of these recordings. So I'll, I'll leave most of the closing arguments to the, to the other beautiful ladies, but thank you so much for enlightening me to a whole new world um and, and book so i really appreciate it thanks cindy i echo uh daisy's uh comments definitely thank you for opening uh a new avenue of literature um it, essentially it was um definitely enjoyed the book uh kind of a a, a thrill ride uh, if, if, if you will. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that, that you, uh, pointed us to, to this author. V. I, I really, you guys have put me on to some amazing stuff as well. So I'm just glad you guys enjoyed it. Carla. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, I believe I get to pick the next one. Yes. I'm waiting to see. Yes. See you I, already have it. I already have it. <laughs> okay, so something cool. was said during this and I was like, it made up my mind. I know what we're All reading. Right. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, can't wait for the next one. Um, it would be great if we, like, I finished, I took my time reading this, right? Because we picked mm -hmm. this before the holidays and I was like, I'm, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. And then like, I got through it so fast and then we had to wait another like a month and a half to do this. Yeah. Like, we can't yeah. do this with this next book. It was my fault. <laughs> no, we're going to no, do better. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so. It's going to be a crazy time for me in the next couple months, uh, but we should be able to get it done. Well, but, this next one's going to probably take you a while to get through. Not because it's long, but because there's a lot of it. It's a lot to digest. It's a, it's a nonfiction. Okay, we might as well reveal it now. Okay, it's called Invisible Women, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. Oh, my word. That's a title for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I started reading that a couple years ago, Carl. It's it's very, very eye-opening. I'm really glad that you threw this nonfiction uh, spin okay, into non the situation. Non nonfiction. Non okay. Nonfiction. Yeah. And okay. I think, you know, I, I read uh, Cheryl Sandberg's uh, book, Lean In, a few years ago mm -hmm. um, as a mm -hmm. recommendation from um, a, a strong woman that I know. And that changed my mind. Like, that just totally changed the trajectory, I think, of my career, what I want for myself. 
um, as a professional woman. <laughs> and so, and this, this, you know, like we were just talking a, a minute ago about like, you know, if a woman shows certain characteristics, she's known as like a bossy woman and a man is known as like, you know, so this like will expand your brain about all the bias that exists in today's world, um, not just here in the United States, but throughout the entire planet um, and how we are at such a disadvantage as women. Um, and I honestly, like, I think that the first step to remedying that is education. And so, um, hopefully that'll help us, you know, for us, for ourselves, for our daughters, for our nieces, for our sisters, for our friends. All the women in, yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly for men too, I think, it, you know, if we can get, you know, one man to read this book in addition to ourselves, we'll be a better world period. Definitely winning. All right. With that being said. I'm going to sexy walk into my Sunday, you know, hey, we're all going to be out of here. Um, <laughs> as usual, it was an amazing chat. Um, it's like my brain lit up uh, with all the insights from you guys. Um, you're beautiful ladies. And I, I'm always glad when you grace my screen. So to everybody else, shout out to the replay gang. Like I said, we woke up early just to do this. We're going to make sure we share this out. And with that being said, love who loves you. May God bless you with everything that you need. And the CPS scholar and her beautiful Latina ladies are out. <laughs>